Yeah, liars uh, don't like me. Liars. Yeah, people who lie. People who live a lie. There's people that love living lies. There's people that actually, the word brutal honesty. I was I was thinking about that the other day. Like the, the word brutal honesty is just a dumb term. Like I don't understand who wants their honesty. Like brutal should be associated with lying. Okay. You're a, little, you're a brutal liar. Right. As opposed to somebody that just is going to inform you of, of what they believe the truth to be. Right. And sometimes what is the truth? Oh. It really is a great place for abuse. The cellar. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we really. It, it, it was just they were just epic battles. Yeah. Geraldo, Colin Quinn, Nick DiPaolo, Jim Norton, Rich Voss, Patrice O'Neill, Keith Robinson, Bobby Kelly. It was insane. And if you came down there and you wore the wrong shirt, it was <laughs> fucking over. So the funniest guys I ever met. Yeah, I yeah. ever met. They, like they, they were. Uh, they were unreal. And Patrice was the king. Like you walked in, if he wasn't there, you were relieved. And there were nights yeah. when you were on a roll, and you know you were you were killing someone at the table, and then he starts walking in, like yeah. your heart would sink. Like yeah. oh fuck, here yeah. we go, <laughs> here we go, <laughs> here we go. Now we're, now it's the real deal. Dad's home. Eddie If said the funniest thing one time. He goes, dude. He goes sometimes like I'll, I'll come walking into the cellar. and he goes, I'll be. He would just as he walked in, Patrice would be killing at the table, and then just see. Eddie come in and be like and just start yelling over at him and he said and Eddie said that I would literally think fuck he saw me and 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 then that's when the the whole thing kind of took off and like yeah. tough crowd came out of that how about you Kev uh you know what if I wanted anyone to be president I would want it to be Shaq because Shaq can do whatever the hell he wants Shaq can call the UN right now and tell him that he wants to bomb France they're gonna say but why Shaq they didn't do anything uh I don't know I don't like the basketball team. I think the basketball team stinks. I want to drop a bomb on them. I want to dunk it. So I, want to dunk it. I want to do it. Well, Shaq, is that what you want to do? I want to do it. That Shaq ate his balls. He called me with that Shaq. Oh, you think that Shaq is going to be good? Yeah, Kevin. How do you try to make my shit? But when Patrice was around, you really had to step up your game. I don't want to be alone. I don't, I don't, like, I don't like the hostility. I'll go over there and see what happens, stupid. Don't mumble Don't now. break that bitch. <laughs> mumble. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. You sit here and let Mr. Fat Man all by himself with no fat jokes. Let's see what happens on your 200 special now, you four idiots. You're going to see how boring five white right. guys are going to be okay. now. Go. <laughs> It was just like the nucleus of the whole thing. Talk about the stock market, asshole! Oh, I want to do an impression of your mother looking for the punch bowl. <laughs> when they reminisce over you, my God. He also didn't take any easy roads himself. Like, everybody does some bullshit version of themselves. He, he didn't do that himself. Like, he was such an atypical. The first thing he ever did that, made, that I saw that made me go, this guy is special, was mm -hmm. uh, his bit about how he loves the Beatles. I gotta pretend I'm cool all the time. I can't, you know what I mean? I'm a Beatles fan. <laughs> I'm a closet Beatles fan. I don't listen to the Beatles tapes. I listen to the Beatles tapes in the corner. Like, I, cause I can't be cool, you know. I can't be a gangster, you know, driving through Harlem trying. We all live in a world of yes and yes and we all live. Hey yo, hey dude, you owe me some. Yo, look, let me tell you something. I gotta have my money in two days, boy. You got two days. Oh yeah, I tell you something. Oh yeah. One thing I love about stand-up since I started loving it is how it works like musically, you know? Mm. How somebody works the mic and sounds. Like a rhythm? Yeah, and he had this great way of doing that, that he would start by just talking about something, introducing the subject. Here's how you learn how to make your man uh, like you and desire what you want, which is love. All right. Equate how you feel about your vagina to how we feel about our time and our space. You understand? What we have to do to get pussy, the things we have to do. Now, I can't fuck you against your will. You got a desire to want to fuck me. If I fuck you against your will, that's rape. <laughs> now, if I'm on the phone and I say, look, I got to go, and you say, well, I ain't got to go. I want to talk to you some more. But you are raping my time. 
And then he would start getting excited about something. And Taking something from me. No means no, bitch. I said I got to go. Why are you forcing me to stay on the phone and talk to you about nothing? And then and then the place is rolling and he'd rot. You know, it was just yeah, had a great dynamic to the whole thing. Yeah. That's, a That's what he was starting to figure out. It was so almost like he didn't even write. That was the big <laughs> thing about Patrice. He didn't know what was his yeah, material go, go, that go he wrote. Go with that, Opie. Go with oh, that. Oh, yeah. No, he didn't. He just let's you like, don't think fuck. he wrote it all, right? It's like Jay Z. Jay Z. Jay Z. I heard he just is all in his fucking head. Right. The same thing. He. he I don't. Th- I. I known him twenty years. Never saw him go. Hey, I got to go into CVS and get a notebook. <laughs> right. Because I'm not going nowhere, and I will kill a motherfucker. Tell me to go like back to Africa. But listen, I'm talking to black people. Stop that fucking horse shit. That go back to Africa shit. First of all, Africans don't like black people. That's first one. <laughs> they don't like us. And what the fuck am I gonna do in Africa <laughs> besides fighting some war, wearing uh, sweatpants and tuxedo shoes? With a fucking <laughs> with a fucking machete in my hand, with a pair of fucking tuxedo shoes <laughs> and a knife, it, it fighting some goofy ass fucking war. Fuck it. His, his take on things was always so different. It was always so like, whoa, okay, and there's that too. You know, how you can tell how pretty a white woman is. The value you look at her, and then you wonder how long they would look for if she was missing. He was the best to argue race with, though, because even when, like, oh, we, God, for yeah. hours, because even when you didn't agree with it, he always had a great point of view. It was like, and you always had to respect what he was saying. You, it's like, it wasn't just the typical black guy sounding off about race. Right. That's it was a well that. thought out point. Yeah. Black people ain't getting no money for slavery. We ain't going to get reparations. What we did have is language. We got to say anything we want, the way we want, which is the reparations, which is the fact that I can say cracker all day and everybody goes, uh-huh, uh-huh. but <laughs> because that was my payoff as a black man, I think it goes like this. Uh-huh. Black women can say anything they want. <laughs> White women can say 95% of things they want. Black guys can say the next level of things they want. And straight white dudes can't say nothing. <laughs> I hate how much fun black people can have racially, man. It's just, I can say anything I goddamn want racially. And white people have to sit there and take it. You know, I am evil, yes. It's like, come on, man. Black people really don't look at white people with, like, you're the oppressor anymore. It's just something we do. It's just like we like not liking white people. And white people like not liking us. It's like, it's just, that's just what we do. It's just. The reason black people don't like white people right now. And white people don't like black people right now. One, uh, black people don't like white people because of this new type of racism. This shit I can't prove. (laughs) Why I look at this fucking buzz cut head fucking in the army white boy here, and I'm just looking at him going, I bet this cocksucker's racist, but I could never. (laughs) I can't prove it. We agree there is racism. Uh, is it racism? Yeah, absolutely. Are you racist? N- no. Nope. Well, please help me find racism. There was never a race around him, though. No. You hang out with Katrina. I even I used to drive him to his house in Roxbury, and it was never like, oh my God, I'm driving a black dude back to the project. It was just driving Patrice home. Well, yes, we know if you decided to swim, you might be, like every other sport, excel past us in no time, but be honest. The bottom line is this, the reason you don't swim, community room, no pool, Rikers, no pool. That's where you're great at ping pong. Because any sport right, that can be played in a prison. Any sport that can be played in the day room, you master. The Chinese are good at ping pong too. Nothing for that one, folks. <laughs> the day room and I got nothing. You know, see, the fact that you know so much about black people is really a curse to you and your white friends. What? They, they I'ma tell you why. Colin has a real knowledge of like black people for some reason so when he says these black things he thinks that all white people know about community day rooms and you don't (laughs) so he's a man in purgatory black black people don't like him and white people don't understand him he don't know where he's going colin is the 
closest thing I think Patrice ever had as far as a, he would always talk about never having a mentor. Mm. And I think he really, really um, looked up to Colin in a, in a lot of ways. This is, wait a minute, before we start, what is this in I got to work on Martin Luther King's birthday, so this is my <laughs> protest fist. Nobody forced you to come. I'm they did sorry. force me to come. No, it is. It, it, it is disrespectful. I want to say to you, from all the white people, happy birthday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I still got it, baby. Why don't you just accept that? And those two together are just, anytime they were together, is just annoying because they would <laughs> never acknowledge their man love. <laughs> Last time I oh, saw Colin with great. Patrice was when we were leaving from the <clears throat> Jay Moore podcast. And Colin was up next and we were leaving out. And Patrice goes, oh, Colin, my girl loves you. My girl loves you. Take a picture. Take a picture. So in my head, I'm like, this means he loves you, Colin. This means uh, he uh, wants uh, a picture. Oh, shit. <laughs> Son of a bitch, you're right. What's up? 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 Twan, damn, man, that nigga Big got something to say. Yo, Big, what you got to say, Big? Yeah. Yeah. Patrice, the best advice he ever gave me, and, and what I, I, my first thought of him is, I was at Nick's Comedy Stop, it was 1991. Look, my man Trey Doe, the OTB crew. And we were still just getting to know each other. I remember I, I was sitting with him. He had his discman on, and I was, you know, trying to get to know him a little bit. And I, you know, tapped him. I was like, "What are you listening to?" And he's like, uh, "He was listening to like a bootleg version of uh, Notorious B.I.G." <laughs> and he played me that before, you know, anybody had even heard wow. of this guy. And he was still Bruiser. We were calling him Bruiser. It was before he was Patrice. Bruiser. Yeah, he was he was Bruiser for the first few years back in Boston. But I remember that night. Uh, having our first heart to heart and he said to me um he said you know man you can't you can't fuck with the truth be the truth always wow. and everything will roll off satellite radio djs opie and anthony they're under fire now for airing joking comments about raping secretary of state condoleezza rice will they be the next to go is radio cleaning house there's a one clip that really for me defines patrice it's when you guys got in trouble patrice got on that fox show with that really humorless lady the president now new city president sonia osario and just <laughs> annihilated her made her look ridiculous made the whole thing look preposterous it's funny this is the thing i i have i don't know her but i'm a, i'm assuming that she has nothing to do with funny so i'm gonna speak as the expert on funny funny people should just be left to trying to be funny what if, what if they're not funny then you made a mistake but how many listen how many times has the unfunny how many f unfunny rape jokes lead to rape sonia you know what's happening now it's the marketplace okay is deciding what's appropriate or what's not appropriate it's i think the nation is just tired there's a new mood in the nation what nation the nation you know what we're tired of things that is are just the nation is paper and you I'm, the, I'm not the nation i'm just speaking for me and funny where's the pc cops run amok do well, you think Who's she's a pc, PC cop? cop of course she is she's she has an entire encyclopedia of, of her stance on it, but it's no passion involved. It's not a real, this is just what she has to say. We are outraged and oh, he's, fired he's and fired an and fired. Name calling. I'm he's outraged. I am he's, outraged. He when she called him a fool, he won. Now, if I called you a fool, ah! You know what? And defined it in the best way that I heard anybody define all this PC bullshit. The attempt is what I'm trying to fight for. The joke may or may, funny jokes and unfunny jokes are, are come out of the same birth. That you, you don't know if anything is gonna be funny. You should attempt don't to be you, able to make anything funny. It was brilliant. The way he said it, the way he put it was brilliant. The way he handled that dumb cunt was brilliant. It was perfect Patrice. A violent act of hitting her in the back of her head, her body- It's called the donkey punch. Which will then- Why are you laughing? 
She's outraged. It's called the donkey punch. It's called humor that she has no Here's clue what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, John Gibbs really loved Patrice. Well, John Gibbs had to do an apology for Patrice's yeah. performance. Did he really? Oh, yeah. yeah, he didn't want to. You could just tell, you know, he was in a, a bad spot. And then, unfortunately, you know, Patrice is sticking up for us and, and comedians in general. And like you said, Joe Funny. And it turned out that Fox never used him again. But that was Patrice. He didn't give a fuck. He didn't care. I think my Fox thing with that lady was one of my... F he enjoyed my that. I did. I was blessed that night in terms of, you know, everything came together. My mind was, was sharp. I think I proved my point. And I think I got a lot of, I changed some minds, you know what I mean? Because I, I did, my agenda was funny. Your agenda is not funny, sweetie. Your agenda is women. <laughs> and your, your agenda is women that don't need your help. All right, our next guest holds nothing back when it comes to his take on love and relationships. So listen up, ladies, because there is something comedian Patrice O'Neill wants you to know. Let me let me be honest with you ladies. This is something you'll never hear You'll never hear this. This is something that's never been said in the history of the globe Four guys hanging out at a party by themselves and one of them goes hey, you know what to make this party even better If my girl was here <laughs> Men want to be alone <laughs> But we don't want to be by ourselves be, we want you uh, somewhere, like in the dwelling, just not here, like just like around the corner, in the vents. You can sit in the vent, I don't care if you want to watch me, but in the ba on the roof, anywhere, but just not in front of me, trying to be my friend. What you doing? What you doing? Watching baseball? Why are you watching baseball by yourself? How come you didn't get me up? You snuck out of bed. Why'd you didn't get me up? I want to watch baseball with you. What you doing? Why you, why you, why you down here by yourself? Move over. Move your leg off that ottoman where it's comfortable so I can sit next to you and wrap my leg around your leg in some weird, I love you, uh, hot vine. Move over. Give me your arm. Give me your arm. Give it to me. Let me give it. Come here. Give me a kiss. Me. Mean the kid. You love me? Say it. Say it. Mean it. What you doing? Why, 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 why? What you eating a hamburger? You shouldn't be eating a hamburger at 11. It's too early to eat a hamburger. Let me go make you a better sandwich. A, a turkey sandwich on 47 grain bread with no mayonnaise and, and bean sprouts. Tastes like rat turds and, and twigs. Ain't that better? Ain't that better? A dry sandwich you don't want? Ain't that better? Why is the TV so loud? Well, turn it down. Ain't that better? Can't hear the TV? Got a dry sandwich you don't want? Ain't that better? Why is it so cold in here? Turn it. Why is the ceiling fan and the air conditioner? Turn it off. Ain't that better? Sweating. Wrapped up into a hot vine. Can't hear the TV. Got a dry sandwich. Ain't that better? Why is it so dark in here? Let some sunlight in. Ain't that better? Can't see the TV? Can't hear it? That's what you're here to do, is just be fire-breathing parrots and ruin man fun. As soon as you see man fun. That's a very interesting take. So why is it that guys just don't want us fun, wonderful ladies around when you're hanging out with the boys? Because, you, you know, you talk about nothing. Um, thank you for laughing at that. That's really against your instinct to laugh at that, but you, you just force yourself on us every second you can. So we're just really annoying, essentially. Yeah, but you know it, and I don't know why you don't care. We do care. We just want you to give us attention. Yeah, that, that's not a problem, but it's like you just want more and more and more. And you're just not willing to give it. Yeah, we're willing to give it, but you, you, you take it before we get a chance to give it. Okay, all right, all right, very I mean, I'm not trying. <laughs> okay. I'm not trying to be arrogant about it. It's just, uh, it's just, you know, what I think is. man honesty becomes misogyny for some reason. But I'm just telling you how I feel. Let me ask you a question. Here's a question. Here's a good, serious question. Okay, ladies, if you didn't have a vagina, like say it was a terrible train accident, right? And the doctor. <laughs> was like, we have to remove your pussy right away, or you're going to die. How would you keep your man past, you get a two-month guilty, I can't leave the bitch right away because you just lost a pussy in a train accident. 
can't just walk right out on her. How would you keep your man past that if you didn't have a vagina? Wow. Nothing? You can talk. You can talk. Suck his dick. Okay. Mouth. Asshole. Okay. Great. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, I've been getting pussy beam the whole show, right? But I give women the opportunity to say, I'm going to make myself worth more. But you just classified yourself as a series of holes. But, but I, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to treat you special, but you're just a bunch of holes for yourself. No one said learn how to play Xbox, learn how to play pool, tell better stories, get another bitch that got a pussy to come on in. Well, look, whatever. Anyway, you can catch him on HBO On Demand. And you're not married. see the upcoming con No. Why? It's my choice. Your choice. I All right, bet it is. All right, tickets to the upcoming it, uh, show, My Dirty Sexy Valentine. Just go to our website, cw11.com slash morning news. And coming up in the next hour, I'll tell you what one person paid for Shakira's bra. Okay. Emily's not married. What? Uh -huh. I'm difficult. I'm so not difficult. <laughs> All right. Oh. He was very. He was impossible to own Patrice because there's nothing you could dangle in his face mm. that he couldn't walk away from. Since the industry, yeah. if the industry gave him a pass, right. if somebody said you, because he didn't want to do it on anybody else's terms. He, you know, he didn't want to fucking play ball and feel like yep. shit. To the beach, but he told me, he said, dude, I shouldn't be, f I should be more famous than I am. I shouldn't be friends with you. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he, like, <laughs> he's like, I love you, Bobby, but I shouldn't be able to, I shouldn't be, you shouldn't be, I shouldn't be as accessible to you as I am. Like, you can just call me. Yeah, yeah my, my, uh, back, yeah. my friend was an audio guy on this uh, Comedy Central pilot that him and Voss did. I think they were, like, roasting people at a wedding or something yeah. like that. <laughs> Disney only took that. And it, he said that, it, you know, Patrice had his mic on. He was listening. He abused these Comedy Central executives when they came down to watch the pilot and, and give notes. He goes, I never heard a fucking bashing before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate pilot never got picked up. He's like, I respect that guy, man, because he just told him, that shit ain't funny. I ain't fucking doing it. Wow. Why are you here? Why? You, you, wear, you, wa you have a pocket watch. Go home. Oh, please. <laughs> you have some big guys there, too, and the pilot never got picked up. It's like, I respect that motherfucker. It's like web junks. I mean, that's the Tosh 2.0 that he's getting millions of dollars right, right That's right. what it is. Yep. Like, I stopped doing web junk um, because it, it, I couldn't talk about Chinese people kicking each other in the balls no more. <laughs> I, I was done. And I said, look, for me to do this, this is how much money... I'm going to need to continue to lie. The first two hmm. things at Web Junk, I, kept, I, I was honest. The next thing, I was lying. And I said, this is how much you got to pay me to lie. And, and that money was goddamn good, watching it come in. Those checks every week, oh my god damn, look at this. <laughs> and once I, I decided to stop, I stopped. And I'm not holding everybody to some standard, dude, because there's things I've done mm -hmm. that I shouldn't have done. Do you know one time you had a meeting at Comedy Central? And, you know, you put on your I'm going to get a deal shirt and you go in there. <laughs> yeah. And you tap dance and you try to sell your stupid idea for a show. You know, he went in there and spent 45 minutes <laughs> trashing the executives for putting Mind of Mencia on the air. <laughs> <laughs> he had such a he had such a like an under like a firm understanding too with the realities of that which you know he would always say like look man if you want to walk that righteous road you got to take the lumps when friends see other friends messing up you don't talk behind their back you pull an intervention Patrice O'Neill needs my help he goes out to Hollywood recently this is all true doesn't get the fame and money he deserves why he's got what they call an attitude problem he needs a psychological makeover but first we need to have him show you exactly what he did out there. This is verbatim dialogue, so you can see what we're talking about. Okay? Uh, let's take you back to L.A. three weeks ago, and we knocked the trees on the set of some TV show he's doing a guest spot on. First, you get there early in the morning. First person you meet is the young production assistant, an enthusiastic innocent, usually. 
<laughs> you excited? <laughs> it's six in the morning. What are you? Uh, uh, what, I don't. Well, no, I'm not excited. All I'm doing is three lines in this stupid show. What are you doing? You're just a call sheet girl. What? Well, just, you're, you're just what? You're meaningless. You're like your pony. Beat it. Oh my God. <laughs> Did he ever tell you that story when he went into CBS and he walked in there? Maybe tap dance for half a second, and right in the middle of the meeting, he just says "fuck," and he starts looking at every executive there, and starts pointing at everybody. You don't like me, you don't like me, and you don't like me. Just started trashing him. Hey, man, how you doing? We're doing a scene together. I'm Jake. Hey, dude. Do you uh, do you want to run some lines for what? What? So we can go over those dumb jokes that we just read? What do you want to? Do? Is that why you went to acting school? So that you could be a stupid delivery boy with a paper hat? Hey, man. That's what you're useless. You might as well keep it on. You suck. <laughs> Beat it, Jake. I'm just joking with Jake. Why would you do that? And he's like, man, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Fucking gonna sit there and through three thousand miles to have you staring at me? Natural thing. Okay, let's say the show star showed up. Hey, man, how's it going? Hey, man. Hey, everything's cool. But that script, that sucks, man. What's yeah, wrong with that script? That's the thing, you know. Not with a brother like you. you know, we can make it more. You know, make it seem more like 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 the hood, you know? Well, just, these white writers, they can't, you know, they can't write us realistically. You know? Oh, yeah. We, we want to do improv, ghetto. You, you're about as ghetto as Urkel. We, where are you from? You're not even real. Tennis lessons are more ghetto than you. What is wrong with you? Come on, man. You got to get out of here. You make the Dean Harnison look like 50 cents. Stop taking the phone. All right, playboy. I'm just messing around. Cause you, got, he cause you got a desk. To audition for everybody hates Chris. Didn't mm. know his lines. Like y'all don't want me. Y'all. Don't. I'm like I was dying to give him the part. He loved putting a spark to a bridge, though. <laughs> and it was fucking hilarious. But like also, you just <laughs> know, be like, thinking, what are you oh, doing? What, why? Yeah, it's like why cross are you doing it first, it? then burn it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want you to change. I want you to walk over to Rich Corson, our executive producer, right now, and say, Hey, thanks for having me on the show. Call me courtesy. Hey, what's up, Rich? Hey. And thanks for being the only guy in showbiz with a goatee. That's real original. <laughs> he sucks too. What? What? For Patrice, being honest was more important. Like being honest with these people and telling them that you're awful was more important than them approving of him in the moment. Mm -hmm. And he was willing to blow opportunities for that. Right. Because he really had integrity, man. It's like even though he made decisions that he probably would look back on and go, ah, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. It was always uh, for integrity's sake. Baylor, I hardly know her. Damn it, Michael. Pay attention, man. And I'm not being a fucking asshole when I'm saying this. There's no way I shouldn't be bigger than I am. There's just no way. I've tasted little parts of what success is. I've tasted it. It's it's it's, it's good. It's, it's deliciously. <laughs> you, you get drunk off of it. Spike Lee loved him too, and uh, he was in 25th Hour. How you doing, big man? It's the man, the man's arrived. Coming and going at the same time. Seven years, man. That shit ain't no joke, man. It's nervous, man. That's the word. Damn, you all right? And he asked me, it was uh, it was some movie with Showtime, and I said, man, I said I can do the part. I, I don't want to come read, but I did it through my agents. I did the right thing. Uh -huh. He just bypassed my agents, everybody else. He called me personally and said, come, come do this. I, how can I, what am I do? Just say, fuck my agents and fuck people that I, I have a business with. If I do that, that destroys my entire system. I yeah. feel like I should have a system like you have a system. I, I can't. He said, I, right. that was it. And that's how it is. Now, I only lost what I lost. I didn't lose fame, glory, and everything. I only lost some, some money. I sat twice up on the front row at MSG. It's so intoxicating when you're <laughs> in the front row. You're looking around at who else is there, You have to right? move your feet because you might trip the player. <laughs> <laughs> when they threaten to take that away, it's scary. It's, it's deflating. It's it's it, it makes it makes me furious, man. It makes me furious because you feel lonely and help. You feel helpless because mm -hmm. you know you have to deal with this shit to make it in this business. And I got in this business because I was a funny kid. Mm -hmm. And then I found out what comedy was, and it ain't funny. <laughs> and I'm like, it, it tricked me. It tricked me. I thought it was just fun and games, and I get paid. I try. I swear to God, I try. But I'm like. I don't want to put myself in a spot to where I'm balanced. Like I'm telling you, I, I sit I sit in my house every day, and I and I I, I appreciate my ceiling fan, man. 
because one day somebody's going to try to take it. And I got to look at it and know that someday somebody's going to try to take my ceiling fan. The game we're in is like jail. There's no rogue, lonely, gunslinger guy in Hollywood. There's no, I do it myself and nobody fucks with me. Do it my way. My way. Help. It ain't none of that. You got to yeah. be affiliated. It's like um, the Godfather. The guy goes, Godfather. And he goes, why well, you never even fucking say hi to me. Yeah. But you know what? Here's my deal. I'll do what you want. And when I need you, I'm just going to come yeah. get what I need. And he goes, you hear this? Knock on the door. And it's like, you got to pay me back. And the fear that guy, that when you owe, is that they're going to take everything from you. Mm -hmm. So if... If they didn't make you, they can't really break you. But I, I made a decision. That's why people go, well, why Patrice isn't... I don't want to owe that much. Mm -hmm. I don't. Because <laughs> there's people that count on me to have a, 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 like a revolutionary attitude sometimes. Just where I argue. Yeah. So I let a lot of people down if I put myself in a position to have to f flop around on my belly. Have to be a spokesperson See, like that. or right. That's why I talk so much. Because... I want people to understand what I'm saying. <laughs> now, if I talk about gays and talk about anything I have a problem with, I'm going to make sure if they're going to end my career, you know it's a muscle move that is unfair. We all, we all let context be destroyed. Yeah. Context is gone. And that was... I can't slip up. I can't say nothing. You can't understand what... You don't feel me? You don't feel what I'm saying? This Please. business is the beast. Yeah. And it eats everybody and shits them out. But here's what's funny about the beast. It's a never-ending line of people who want to get in the mouth and get <laughs> chewed up and shit out. Why is that? It's because you, when you get in the belly, yeah. you get $2 million a week. <laughs> and when you get shit out, you have the option to go get back in line and wait <laughs> to go get back in the beast and get eaten and that shit out. Fucker. Is and we line hilarious. up. Hilarious. Weren't you Natalie on Facts of Life? Mm. Loyalty in this business. Oh my God. You're a, if you're loyal to someone in this business, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Anything you do that makes you a decent person normally, mm -hmm. in theory, in show business, you look. And I'm I'm fucked up. I talk a lot of shit, but I I have nothing to fall back on. I've been doing this shit twenty years. Mm. I'm hoping I don't open my mouth enough where I can't do a gig in Utah for a couple of bucks <laughs> so I can fucking keep my ceiling fan turning on. The business stinks, dude. It's And he knew it stunk, and he said it, and he told people who are a part of the business, you stink. He told the people making the decisions, yes. you right. stink. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a tough one to do. Well. And it hurt him. It, it, I mean, in, in all... In all and, he, and Patrice would tell you that. It, it hurt him like in, in, with opportunities and stuff because... He was the one guy of, of all comics that they couldn't hide from. Like when when he was there, we're, I, look, I, I pussy out when those guys are around. I mean, I try to be nice to them because I want them to like me. He honestly didn't give didn't a fuck. Give a fuck, right? Or he cared, but it, for him, being honest was more important. He started caring a little bit at the end. At of At the his end, life. he did. Yeah, you could tell he there was a change going on with him. That's why I love Charlie Sheen so much. He was in the belly. When you make it two million a week doing anything you're in the absolute belly and for that fucker to betray his position in the belly to to, to actually give the beast indigestion <laughs> was was spectacular I, he was a martyr you gotta root for him it, no matter what because no one's gonna stand up for him they gave me like a couple of days notice uh to do it i didn't have a month which i should have had i had uh, about three days Jesus oh, and I only yeah. really got into it on the plane flying there on Friday the roast was Saturday <clears throat> so um, I said just don't put me last because I mean there's, there's no reason to put me last okay all right sure guess, guess what fat boy uh, you're going last I should have said I need to go last they would have put me on then they would right. have been first with John Lovitz went mm -hmm. which is a rough one they knew me as a comic that could go last but it was a bad it was a setup yeah. Cause no one in the audience knew me, so by the time I come up, oh, he's a black guy, and he's doing the coveted Lisa Lampanelli last spot. Who is this young man? <laughs> it was not set up for you to do well. Yeah, yeah, it you you it. had everything uh, against you on that one. Like you but walk you in and think off. you're gonna, they like, hey Patrice, we love you, come on, do it. And then it's you come in the room and there's plastic on the ground, like. Oh no.
Cause, you know, <laughs> yeah. they, they were setting me up for t for two to the back of the head. All right, that's it. You know, I'm going to have to be a comic. So I had to half wing it, half uh, material. Thank you very much. I, uh, man, this is all spoken. Man. It's so strange because... I had all this planned shit, but I didn't, like, I didn't know William Shatner was going to be quasi, like, an old racist man, like, but, but everybody's giggling, like, oh, he's a, but, you're a asshole, Captain Kirk. What are you talking about? Like, I don't respect him, but like, I respect him, because he's Captain Kirk. But I think he might be racist because his hair plugs look like black girls' hair. Like, I wasn't going to be mean to Anthony. I, I don't know him. I never met him. Like, like, so I'm sitting here watching him, and I'm like, he has way too much confidence. <laughs> like, in my world, he's an open mic, but nobody knows him. And nobody should. Like, nobody should know Anthony. Uh, I refuse to learn his last shitty name. <laughs> I learned Galifianakis. That's the last shitty last name. This gonna learn in this funky town. He reminds me of a medieval restaurant waiter. Like, his old demeanor, like, hello, may I welcome to, and you just wanna go shut the up and bring me my giant turkey leg, you nothing. I consider Seth an icon, I do. Like, I got a critique about Seth. It, it's too much Seth. It's like it's almost it, it, it's almost like he's jealous of his own creation. <laughs> Where he wants to prove I'm better than the cartoons. But he's not better than the cartoons. See, but I think the problem is with Seth is that he don't have a partner. You know, like the, the South Park guys or Hanna Barbera. <laughs> I know we read that old story that uh Hannah once said, I'm bigger than Yogi, and Barbara slapped the shit out of him for saying that. <laughs> Seth needs a Barbara <laughs> to slap him and slap him twice. Once to say, hey man, don't forget why people love you. And two, just say you're gay. No, <laughs> no straight man writes that many show tunes. That's a fact. <laughs> and I said yes to this, and I'm, I'm dead ass serious. I said yes to this because uh, it, I, I respect Charlie Sheen. I do. I, I say yes because I respect not 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 his body of work. Like not. <laughs> it's, it's all been very Christian Slayerish. Like it just like <laughs> he sucks, but he's he's good. But he sucks at the same time. I think that his stand that he made uh, against the business, I think this is a f***ed up business, but he stood up, he, he still survived, uh, and he proved that nobody can keep like a Sheen down, you know? They can keep uh, Estevez down, because his brother, <laughs> and he's the good one. That must do everything right, and that career is over, holy shit! Tiger blood, he's selling his own blood to make money. <laughs> but I, I want to say to your eyes, man, I, 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 I love that you stood up to what you thought was wrong, and uh, I, I'm impressed by you, and I just wanted to say that. So, thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Y'all take care. Thank you. <laughs> God That's the weird, twisting, ironic thing of this whole thing is you. I would love to hear Patrice's take on his death. He's, he's 
is one of the funniest guys on the oh ever, ever. I mean, I mean, no, I mean, I watch. You can watch all the greats, Chris Rock, all those fucking guys. He's he's. I think he's funnier and up there with all of them. And he was just. He was just figuring out what he did. You know what I mean? He was just figuring out how to take that thing he did mm. in the restaurant and put it on stage. You know what I mean? Yes. The thing he did off stage was coming on stage. And we were all getting ready to have work for Patrice O'Neill. That's basically huh. what was getting ready to happen. Yeah, I know. When, when Elephant in the Room came out, I was excited for him and I was nervous. I was like, is he going to make me look like a child? Because like, he was that... <laughs> Like it was literally what he was saying. I almost felt like once it was his to take. Once he just decided he wanted it. The quicker that a man goes raw, it makes him look like you know. Go ahead, pimp. You you got it in raw. The quicker the woman goes raw, it makes you look. Yeah, look. It makes you look bad. He's definitely, he's definitely in my top. In my top two. Yeah, like, of, he's. Of, this is unbelievable. But it's yeah. like never gonna hear that big laugh again that's the first thing i thought of i was like oh man you know if you made patrice laugh you felt like funny. oh God, yeah it kind of reset. Yes. you're funny for me anyway it was like okay yeah i should stick around <laughs> patrice's <laughs> it patrice validated came. you yeah because he wasn't he was no bs yeah, but you know what I might do? Get her next. I'm not disrespectful. I might get her one of those. Uh, you can take that thing. You can take that thing. You can I talked about his big yeah. dumb laugh. But anybody that Greatest thinks Patrice ever. was mean, when you when you made him laugh like that, like you you really felt like a funny person. Oh yeah, yeah. It's right. weird. It's like it's funny. It's like I'm I'm grateful. I said to somebody like, I had a very complete friendship with him. Like, there's nothing that I say like I wish I had said this. Right. I wish I had expressed that. Like. It, we we traveled together. We did you said that to together. Me. Oh, is it to you? Yeah. Okay. Apparently, we don't have that. But go ahead. <laughs> no, you, 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 I'm right here, Jim. I'm right here. I remember it. You should. You told me that last oh. week too. Oh, okay. I didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shit, friend. He is. All right. So listen. I was talking to this fat fuck that I know, and I say, <laughs> "I'll talk about." This. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, oh, man. but it's like you look back on it. And I'm like, I'm really happy that, that I was. Uh, friends with him and I'm really like happy that I didn't we did that shit together and it's yeah. like, I don't look back and go fuck I wish I had said that man like you look back with regret and there was none yeah. he was fucking That's all great, you could ask for yeah, yeah. he was fucking call you up for his barbecue and be like yo man. he actually called you and thanked you for coming to the barbecue yeah which yeah. is like dude he for all the shit that people say about him like he's this and he's that and he's this big motherfucker and he makes fun of people and he, he's mean to people he wasn't he was funny yeah. all, the time. all the time and funny that's what funny is is, is fucking making fun of people and, and being as honest as you possibly can. But he was, he was also the nicest, one of the nicest guys I know. He would yep. call you up and go, yo, I just want to call you up and thank you for coming by, man. I appreciate you coming by to my uh, barbecue. It's like, what? Big L, rest in peace. Rest in peace. What is it that you're trying to do here? What are you... That's a good question. Yeah. It ain't make money because mm -hmm. I'm stuck. You know, like everybody, like, you know, Carlos was saying, I, I want to buy my mom a house. Yeah, I do too. Everybody want to buy. Right. But one thing I learned about this game early um, is it's a lonely game. It's a lonely journey. It's really hard. To answer your question, what I'm trying to do is be righteous. And I, when I say righteous, I don't mean God, you know, God righteous. I mean, just when I wake up, I know I was honest to myself. You know what I mean? And I did the whole tap dance, dude. People be like, why do you do, why, why do you play ball? <laughs> I did it. I tap dance you what like you wouldn't believe. Aspen 1998. I mean, <laughs> I mean, fucking like hot shoes trying to get something. Uh, 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 what does it mean to an end? Yeah. I was trying to get something. 
And I went to LA and I was sitting there, I was gained, I like, I was like 100 pounds bigger than I am now, dude. And I was sitting, and my stomach is like fucking sitting out here. And I had two uh, Whoppers with cheese because that's, <laughs> they were 99 cents, dude. And I, that's all I could afford to eat every day was a Whopper cheese. And it was just sitting on my stomach. And, um, <laughs> and if I had a gun, dude, yeah. I'm telling you, I'd have shot myself. I understand suicide. You, because you couldn't do the act the way you because wanted to. Because I was trying yourself. to get something yeah. from what I do. Because I more want to be a cult figure. Mm-hmm. Like I want to see if I can get people to drink, uh, you know, that poison lemonade or right. whatever. Your cult. I, yeah, I, yeah, I want to get people to believe in something, mm-hmm. but not be on, on a platform where you should. I just want to go, look, man, this is how I feel. And if I'm true to myself, then you might go, damn, you know, I feel that way. And somebody's saying what I'm saying, and I don't want to be a martyr. I want to make some money. But I felt the feeling of of trying to make it, and that that vague make it, that, right. that emptiness of I made it. What's it? You know what I'm saying? So I don't. I just do it because when a guy t- says to me, "Dude, you know, man, that ch- I, you changed my life." That feels good. If a dude says you changed my life, or a woman says you changed my life. For some goofy shit you did, you know that means something. That's it. That, I wanna, I wanna change lives, but, but not be profound about it. Full clip. Do you wanna mess with this? Gangstar.